Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Thanks for being with us today. Let's talk about watering your trees and your shrubs and your flowers and your vegetables with a product that we use, which is Tree Diaper. How do you water your trees? You likely drag a hose over to it, let the hose run for about a half an hour, go and do something else. Stop doing that. Increase your watering efficiency and save money with Tree Diaper. No hoses to drag around constantly. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases stored rainwater when trees need it. The Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Every time it rains, Tree Diaper recharges. Made in the USA, check out all the sizes they have available. Tree Diaper will keep your trees happy. Visit TreeDiaper.com. That's TreeDiaper.com. Well, you can also use Tree Diaper to water your squash. It would work very well for this particular application. Let's talk about squash. Squash, um, there's a lot of different squashes to speak of. Um, you got your pumpkins, you got your gourds, you got your zucchini, you got your butternut, your spaghetti, your acorn, and the list goes on and on. Uh, they fall in a larger category, I guess is what you would call it, Holly. Right. So, yeah. Um, so one is the cucurbita and it's um, an herbaceous vine in the gourd family. And it's typically found in the Andes mountains area. And um, there's five different species grown worldwide. So that includes squash, pumpkin or gourd. And yeah, so that's that's uh, the I guess like the the mother the, of it. The, yeah, the umbrella of the, the umbrella. Or, yeah, of the thing. Now, we all have grown squash, or if you're a new gardener, we're going to tell you things not to do so you can be successful the first time. The rest of us, we've made these mistakes. Um, we want to, number one, squash needs full sun. It can tolerate slight shade, which I mean like one or two hours, but it needs as much sun as you can provide it. And uh, you will see this online. If you're on social media, you will see people in the, you know, I've seen it two weeks ago. Uh, I got my uh, first time gardener, which I understand, but they've already got like squash at six inches tall vining across their grow uh, table, their, their containers. And the squash doesn't and can't go out for at least another four to seven weeks, give or take. We, we did that. Yeah. We've made that mistake. We've done it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, we didn't do it again because starting squash indoors does not make logistical sense because you know, you look at the package, start four to two weeks before your last average frost date, uh, and then transplant in the garden without damaging the roots. These plants are extremely tender and, and um, fidgety with the roots. So some people will start them in the peat pots and then bury them that way. You get them from the store that way. Um, or you can plant them outside two to three weeks after your last frost of the spring has occurred. Just put them in the ground and it will work they will catch themselves up if you did the comparison of two. Uh, you know, you started indoors and then you started from seed in about four weeks. They're the same size. Um, but right. you want to plant them when the soil, here's the key. You just can't throw them on the ground whenever the soil can be worked. The soil needs to be 65 degrees. And when we talk 65 degrees, Holly, we're talking not because, oh, it's been 65 degrees for three days. Let's plant squash. We're talking about the soil. Soil when temperature. You dig down- you know, eight inches or so. Well, let's just go four inches to, safely. How do we test that temperature if we don't have a soil thermometer? I don't know, Joey. How do you test the temperature? You go in the kitchen <laughs> and you get your meat thermometer. Or you can get it from Walton's Incorporated. Uh, meat thermometers work great. You just clean them off when you're done. You get an instant ad- accurate temperature. And you know, oh, the soil temperature four inches down at root zone. 72 degrees let's plant squash so that's a that's a great way in order to know what temperature for anything uh peppers need about 60 65 tomatoes need at least a 50 uh corn 45 minimum 55 really adequate for soil temperature for planting um so there's a lot of charts online which can identify the soil temperature but meat thermometer works great and uh guys if you use the meat thermometer enough you'll get to keep it and the wife, your wife or your girlfriend or whomever uh, will buy a new one for their self. So keep that in mind. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Did, this hasn't happened yet. Not yet, Not no, yet. no, no. So what other things do we, and we're, we're going to get to some of the problems in which you will, will or may face or have faced in the past Um, with growing squash, with some of the problems here. But first of all, when we're growing squash, it is not typically a crop in which you can grow in a very small, limited amount of space uh, situation. 
You, I mean, you can, but you have to certain give it, varieties, right? But you could grow it on the side of, not the side, but on the edge of a raised bed or something like that. But at that point, it's going, it is going to vine out. So if you are okay with it vining out into your yard, that's fine. But it's, it does take up that space. And what I mean by space, a typical pumpkin plant can take 50 to 100 square feet of real estate for a normal plant. Right. I know that one year my sister was growing those pumpkins. She didn't have a backyard that no. summer. <laughs> they they kind of took over. They were mowing around it, and but they got beautiful oh, the pumpkins. The kids, kids had a great time. Yeah. yeah, and they didn't have to mow half most of the yard most of the summer because the, the cucumber or the uh, pumpkins the pumpkin, and the yeah. butternut squash and spaghetti squash took over. So you want it. Now, with your smaller squashes like acorn or delectica, you can vine them up. Butternut spaghetti, I know some people have had great success trellising them. However, these things can get three, five, six pounds well, we at maturity. That, we made that squash trellis thing. Right. What was that? Uh, it was window, or it was a fan, a bo- uh, rotating fan uh, grates where we stacked oh, and yeah. made shelves basically, and the plants grew up on the shelf, produced their fruit, and then, yeah, and then we had, it was actually, and we, and we also did a, squash shelf where we had what it was, three levels shelf. it was yeah. like it looked to if you're if you have no idea what we're talking about uh, if you have ever looked like at a big box store the way they have the additional items stacked up the wall the overflow items we essentially did that it was 10 foot t- uh, eight ten foot tall and it had three layers of rubber coated mesh fencing and the plants would kind of interwine all the way up and then lay and produce the fruit on the shelving well, we would help it yeah of. we would help it but yeah it was kind but of... it takes a lot of space is what we're saying <laughs> um so if you're a new time gardener and you have the availability to utilize that space or build yourself a squash shelf well, yeah um it will work uh very well now there you know there's and the the trellising can you can also trellis zucchini zucchini can be trellised because zucchini is technically a vine Every time the zucchini plant, this is green or yellow, produces a fruit, that will never produce, it, it, it works itself up the vine. So if you have a, a zucchini that you harvest that's eight inches from the soil, there's never going to be another zucchini growing from that zucchini to soil level. They, the vine continues to grow outward and vine and produces more and more as you harvest or as the season progresses. So... Um, it's that's a unique thing about the uh, squash. Now, squash, all these things have unique characteristics, which being they produce male flowers and then female flowers. Right. So basically, the male flowers will open first. Those are the first set of flowers you see, and then in about seven to fourteen days, the female flowers come out. Um, in order to get, if you ever have problems with fl- um, the fruit not developing. Mm-hmm. Then what you can do is when you see the first set of flowers, you just take your finger, touch the middle of the flower, make it kind of feel like it's going to get pollinated type of feeling. And then when it puts out, it's going to put out a good amount of female flowers. If that plant, plants, all, all plants care about is being reproducing themselves. That's, that's what they want to do. So if they feel like they're not going to have a good chance of being reproduced, then they're not going to work towards it. So when you touch the middle of that flower, that that plant is feeling like, oh, I'm going to be stimulated, and then I'm going to be able to reproduce, and then when then it's going to put out equal to more amount of female flowers to help that reproduction. Yeah, the, the, it, the it's uh, seven to fourteen days uh, by the female bloom. Uh, both male and female flowers last for one day. Some people will harvest the male flowers and cook them. Uh, that is a specialty. And um, no squash, uh, you know, with, with the vine is blooming, but no squash that can be like you talked about the lack of pollination and the plant not thinking there's uh, pollinators available. So let's talk about blossom in rot. No, that's that is a squash problem as well. It's whenever you have the wet, the dry, the wet, the dry, and the plant cannot access the calcium in the soil in order to properly develop the fruit, or in this case, the zucchini. Um, then you have about a two or three inch baby zucchini and it's all black and it's starting to rot. Just like you get on the bottom of your tomatoes when you don't have adequate watering. You got plenty of calcium. You don't have the water to allow that calcium to be picked up and took into the plant to properly develop the uh, the item in which you're wanting to grow. Also, we uh, have problems with 
Squash vine borer. Squash vine borer is a moth that comes early in the season. Uh, it typically will attack most of your squashes, excluding butternut squash, because the stem is too tough for it to burrow into to lay its larva. So on your zucchini, your acorn squash, your delectica, your pumpkins, uh, you need to be vigilant about this. And uh, with your, your zucchini, you can plant later in the year because the the uh, reproductive cycle of these particular nasty insects is over. However, with your long duration uh, squashes, your pumpkins and stuff, you got to get them as soon in, in the ground as soon as possible. And you can you can usually spot it. You can look at the base of your plant. You have to look at the base, and yes. you'll see something that looks like sawdust, and it means that the squash vine borer has bore into that base of the plant and laid its larva. Now, at this point, then you take your little surgical knife out and slice down about two inches above and below where that insertion was at, and you just open it up gently, just like you were cutting a piece of uh, really flimsy uh, drain pipe, and you're going to open it up and you're going to see these worms come out. If you're if you're fidgety about this, you got to get somebody else to do it. But this is what saves uh, your zucchini, your pumpkins. We've done this many years over and over again in order for us to successfully have zucchini, pumpkins, and squashes. You re- extract those out and you can leave it alone as long as you don't sever the vine completely. You're just taking a slit out of, you know, just slitting it down about three or four inches and peeling it open to expose those larvae and you'll get the larvae out kill them and then the plant will still survive and produce because what that larvae is doing here it's eating the internal portions out of that uh, of that plant preventing water uptake and nutrient uptake you may have experienced this whenever you go out you see your plants they look like they need to be watered they look all wilty you water them the next day they're still wilty it's it's not good, and then usually the day after that they're they're dead. Uh, it's okay for the plants to be wilting if you don't have that problem on really hot days. You can also increase the mulch around the plant, but that's normal. If they don't pop back or or come back to full surface uh, area uh, tension in the evening, then you've got a problem. But plants typically will reduce the amount of surface area uh, on the their on them in order to prevent them from getting too much sun exposure. Soon it will be warming up, Holly, and uh, you don't want to be sharing your yard with beetles or grubs, and Phylum Bioproducts has the product that can help us with that. Right, and spring is just around the corner. It's time to start thinking about those beetles and grubs in your yard, and Grub Gone can help you with that. Grub Gone can be applied to the turf of your garden or around ornamentals to control the grubs and lessen the impact of beetles they have on your yard this summer. Easy to use, apply with any commercial spreader or irrigate into the soil. Biological that biologically that specifically targets the grubs and beetles invaders without harming beneficial bees, ladybugs, or butterflies. And to be honest, it's the only non-chemical that actually works. You can find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com, phylumbioproducts.com. Hey there, gardeners. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. If you like what you've seen, you can search through the channel and find full in-studio videos of the entire show. If you want to go another route, you can search for it on your favorite podcast platform, by searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show or the Gardening with Joey and Holly Radio Show, and you can download it and take it with you. You can check out all past seasons at our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, under the radio tabs at the top of the page. We thank you for joining us. We hope you've learned and enjoyed the show, the segment, and we'll see you next time.